In Minneapolis, you can't escape harsh weather. Triple-digit heat waves in the summer and brutal winter storms make this a tough town for outdoor sports. That's why they moved the action inside, building the innovative Metrodome. But sometimes when you push the envelope, it rips. So this is the, the Metrodome, home of the Vikings, formerly the Twins, I mean the main venue in Minneapolis. But what I'm seeing is a construction site, because last winter, after 27 years of protecting the fans from the elements, nature struck back. A blizzard dumped a foot and a half of snow on the dome's inflatable roof, ripping it open and closing the venue. And all that work you're seeing up there is this really urgent process to repair the roof. I'm meeting with the executive director of the Metrodome, Bill Lester, who's taking me inside here. How you doing? Good. Yeah. The stadium's been closed for the past seven months, but Bill's getting me an all-access pass to see how the roof collapsed and what they're doing to fix it. There she is, the Metrodome. It took over two years, 40,000 cubic yards of concrete, 500 tons of structural steel, and $55 million to build the Metrodome. In the years since it opened, it's played host to two World Series, a Super Bowl, and two Final Fours. But its greatest triumph? Becoming the second major sports arena in the world with an inflated fabric roof. So I'm confused. How does the roof get held up? We have uh, 20 high-powered fans, and they are the element that keeps the roof. So you actually pressurize the building by use of these fans? That's correct. Vents above the luxury suites are fed by fans hidden near the concourse. So this is the mechanical level, you right. said. This is where it gets serious. <laughs> this is where the bodies are buried? <laughs> yes. All righty, there you go. That's a big fan. When it's calm conditions, two or three of those fans are enough to keep the roof inflated. So if this thing goes on, we go sucking right up against it, I guess. Well, a, a strong, powerful young man like you? No. I think I'll hold myself Those of us a little longer in the tooth? Yeah, yeah possibly. <laughs> I guess they're pulling the air right out. It's from the outside. It's... Oh, jeez, that scared me. The Metrodome's ambitious engineering kept the elements out for decades. We have hard hats and vests for you. OK. Now that it's a construction zone, we've got to get suited and booted before we hit the floor. Uh, yeah, right. we'll do the floor first. It's called a field ramp. It's uh -huh. the only access point to the floor. This is where the uh, football players come out. Yeah. So this is what's up there, this fabric. This is the old stuff. This is the stuff that came down the night of December 12th. Teflon coated fiberglass. So the layers of fiberglass are then dipped in Teflon and it gives it a, a, a very, very strong tensile strength that exceeds, in some cases, exceeds steel. It may be stronger than steel, but on December 12, 2010, Mother Nature took it down. We've had more snow than we had that night. Mm -hmm. We've had some high winds. We never had the confluence of all those factors quite that intensely right. before. The high winds made it too dangerous for snow removal crews to go onto the roof. And the steam heat system that warms the fabric and melts the snow couldn't keep pace as 17 inches of the white stuff piled up. We had the avalanche that started at the top of the roof over there where you see the light. And it took 60 seconds to go from fully inflated to fully deflated. When one triangle panel on the edge of the dome ripped, it was like puncturing an air mattress. The roof began to deflate, and as it caved in, snow and ice shifted towards the center and punctured through two tiles, pouring onto the 30-yard line of the field, forcing the Vikings, scheduled to play the next day, out into the cold for the rest of the season. It was designed to withstand the elements, mm -hmm. but Warm Mother us. Nature proved who was still boss. Right. So you can get us up onto this roof, huh? I'm going to get you up there. To get to the roof, we have to travel up and around this massive stadium. OK. All right, here we go. <laughs> onto the roof of the Metrodome. Oh, here we go. High above Minneapolis. Yeah, thank you very much. Excellent, thank you. Woo, look at that. Wow. That is wild. Isn't it? So, Bill, I see a crew working right here, but they've essentially worked their way around to this point, yeah? Right. So there are 106 total panels. Uh, they're down to six 
left to be fully inserted. Exactly what's happening? Is this going to be an airtight seal that's made? It is. It'll be an airtight seal uh, to withstand the snow load, high winds. Okay. Uh, it'll be a brand new fabric, of course, so it'll be stronger. And the flatter profile now is going to make it better for withstanding wind, high winds. I see. It's just, it's the ultimate circus tent, isn't it? It's the ultimate circus tent. Once the roof is inflated, the fans will move 250,000 cubic feet of air per minute to keep the domed ceiling in place. Awesome thing to see this roof in this concave position a month before it inflates up to this full size. I mean, you just won't see this for the next 25 years. Incredible, huh? One chance to see this like it is. Two weeks after we filmed, Bill and his crew fired up the fans, and in just 45 minutes, the Metrodome was back in action. That's the story of the Twin Cities. Whatever fate dealt them, they doubled down on the future, and the gamble paid off.